Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm doing a very highly requested video on my channel. A lot of you guys have asked me if I would do a DIY bride video all about a wedding budget and tips for saving money, so I wanted to wait until after my wedding to share this video with you guys. I knew I would experience things I wanted to share with you and just have some more tips that would help you guys out, so I'm really excited about this video. I feel like I have a lot of tips for saving money, so before I get started, please subscribe and like if you're new. I do have a link down below for the playlist for this series in case you have missed out on any videos and let's get started. My first tip for you guys might seem pretty obvious but it's to figure out exactly what your wedding budget is and then what I recommend doing is going through the list of everything you want before it's booked. So the venue, the photographer, the dress, food and alcohol, and the music. All of those things tend to be the most expensive. See how all of those things fall within your budget. If you hit the budget, then you might want to scale back on some things because obviously there are a lot of other expenses that will pop up. I always recommend having a little bit of safety money at the end. Sometimes things pop up and they are way more expensive than you thought they were going to be. Sometimes you think of something last minute that you really want to have at your wedding. So I really recommend staying as far in budget as you can, especially in the beginning because a lot of the time things can be a little more expensive than you thought they were, especially during certain times of the year for some reason. Since I had a summer wedding and it was a holiday weekend especially, some things were a little more expensive, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. My next tip has to do with paying for things. Now, I know a lot of you guys know this already, but there is a really important reason I wanted to mention this. So when you book something for a wedding, like a venue or maybe rental furniture, it could be a lot of different things. Typically half of the payment is due when you book it and the other half is due the day of the wedding or sometimes two weeks prior. Now I'm the kind of person who likes to just pay things off. I don't like having a balance for things. I don't want to worry about it. For a wedding, I really recommend that you don't and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, I had never worked with any of these vendors before so I just wanted to protect myself in case they didn't show up or if they forgot something. It's a lot harder for you to get any money back once you've already paid someone so I definitely recommend that you save pay paying the other half for when you have to so that way you can see that everything is there. What I did is as soon as I paid half the balance, I asked for an updated invoice. I printed out all of those invoices and then I wrote out a check in advance, put it with that invoice so once they arrived I could run through the invoice really quickly and make sure everything was there. I did have a situation where one of the vendors had an invoice that was $50 more than the one I had. I don't think they realized I printed out an invoice like nine months ago. It was so far in advance from the wedding when I paid for this. And so I showed them the invoice and they apologized and I can't say if it was on purpose. It could have been an honest mistake, but it saved me $50. So I really recommend that you do that. It's just so much harder for you to get any money back once you've already paid for something, if they forget something or just something happens, things can happen. I recommend that you have an invoice printed out so you can protect yourself. It could save you money. Hopefully nothing will happen to you guys, but I really recommend that. My next tip is to save here and spend here. If you want something that is a little expensive, there's always ways to save money on something else. For us, it was really important for us to have really good food, so we definitely splurged a little on the food, but we saved on alcohol and flowers. If you can work with a caterer who will let you supply your own alcohol, I highly, highly, highly recommend that. That will save you thousands of dollars, seriously. That is something that is so expensive at weddings, is the alcohol. If you're having your wedding at like a restaurant or a country club, something like that, then you probably won't be able to, but we had our wedding at a cottage on the lake so we could supply our own alcohol since it wasn't like an establishment or something like that, but we just bought our alcohol from I think a Sam's Club and it's the same exact thing. It's like regular name brand, but it's in a larger quantity and it's a little bit less than a grocery store or something like that, so it wasn't like a lesser brand. We still had all the name brand things, but we purchased it ourselves and then the servers served that instead of bringing it from a restaurant. Seriously, you guys, that is just such a huge expense at a wedding. If you can do that, I highly recommend it. It's the same exact thing and it costs you so much less money. The other thing is flowers. I told you guys a few videos back I was doing my own flowers. 
It was extremely time consuming. I did them on Thursday and our wedding was on a Saturday, but it was so worth it. I saved a ridiculous amount of money doing that, so if you can do that, if you have someone to help you, I definitely recommend it. tip for you guys is to book now and ask for upgrades later. Now I'm not saying this in a way where I think you should be asking for things for free so take this with a grain of salt but I'm going to share with you guys some of the things we did that definitely were an upgrade that we really didn't have to pay for. So the first thing is with our caterer we did a three course menu at the table and then we also did a cocktail hour before with a bunch of appetizers so I think there were five appetizers but we were taking our pictures so honestly I don't even know exactly what there was but we asked if they could do past canapes for some of the appetizers and then some on tables. If you don't know what a past canapé is, it's just when servers like walk around with a tray that has some appetizers on it so people can take it from a server and they don't have to stand around a table. I just really like that and I think it's fun and I'm sure that would have been an upgrade if we had asked for that in the beginning, but it was just something small so we didn't have to pay any more for that. If you ask for a big upgrade, I'm sure you will have to pay for it obviously, but that was just something small so that was something we didn't have to pay extra for. The other thing has to do with all of the vendors. We set up a lot of the things ourselves and I didn't want to have to worry about a vendor showing up late or something taking longer than we anticipated to set up so I booked everything way far in advance probably nine months I booked out like the tent the chairs the tables all the rental furniture because we did like a lounge section I booked all of that really far in advance and then about two weeks before the wedding I just reached out to all of our vendors I asked all of them if they would drop everything off the day before instead of the morning of and all of them said yes and with all of those things it was rented by the day so I still only paid for one day there wasn't a single vendor that asked me to pay for two days and I think that was because it was only one day for the event and they knew nothing was going to be used the day before but everything was dropped off by noon on Friday for the wedding on Saturday at 4 so that just saved us a ton of stress we could kind of like rearrange things and see where we wanted things and it just saved us a ton of stress and time so I really recommend you guys ask just a week or two in advance if your vendors wouldn't mind if they drop something off the day before so you don't have to rush that just is a huge tip for you guys it will save you a lot of stress my next tip has to do with bridesmaids dresses now I really think it's important to try and save money on the bridesmaids dresses because I think you should be realistic in the fact that some people have to fly to your wedding which obviously is expensive some people have to get hotels or pay for like shoes hair makeup all those things definitely add up so I really wanted to make sure I wasn't asking someone to spend a ton of money on a dress. What we did is we used Rent the Runway, and I know I'm weird in this, but I really don't like when everyone wears the same dress. I made sure they all went together, everyone was wearing like floral and stuff. I will have pictures when I have our photos back, I still don't have them back, so that's why I haven't shared a lot of photos with you guys. But Rent the Runway is a great option for bridesmaids dresses, especially because a lot of people will never wear their bridesmaids dress again, like they just probably won't so I didn't want someone to have to buy something really expensive that they would only wear one time but there are so many websites now for bridesmaids dresses so I definitely recommend that you guys at least just take a look at those rental websites and see if there's anything that you like those are all the tips I'm going to share for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and a lot of you have been asking about a wedding video yes I definitely want to share a wedding day video with you guys but I'm just waiting for our photos to come back so I can put some photos in it as well so I really appreciate all of your support on my channel and on this series please subscribe and like if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video